Hey brother, welcome back to this series on making of a nice guy. In this story, I wanna talk about something that could be possibly be triggering, something that could be disturbing to you. So I wanna give you a little bit of warning about that right up front. This is a story about sexual abuse. It's a story about crossing a line that shouldn't be crossed with a child. And it's a story that I can tell you personally because I lived it. So these things may affect you. They may have affected you in your life. It may be something that you've carried forward, but you haven't known how to deal with. If this is something that you've experienced or something that has weighed on you, then I want to be able to have a conversation with you. And I'll talk about at the end of this video how we can do that. But first I want to tell you my story. So when I was nine years old, my mother and my stepfather, we lived in a trailer park. Um, my, my mother and my stepfather had gotten back together. They had actually been divorced and then they had gotten back together. And there was a moment there where they were um, buying weed from someone and smoking weed. And I don't really have a problem with all of that, but I think it kind of contributed to the, the experience that I had on this particular day. I think that they had been smoking and they were in one of the back bedrooms and they were um, naked. They were kind of goofing around and playing around with each other. And at some point they called me into the bedroom. Now, I'm a little boy, right? I'm not very old. I don't know a whole lot about sex or any of that stuff like that. I had been given some books, um, but you know, at that age, you're more interested in playing with friends and riding bicycles and jumping out of trees than you are those types of things. So I got called into the bedroom and my mother was there and she was naked and she was on the bed and she said, she told me to take off my clothes. Now my stepfather was in a corner of the room, sitting in a chair, sort of just watching, just sort of observing all of this. He had clothes on as best I can remember. He might have been in his boxer shorts. I, I don't know. That, that part of the imagery is just sort of, I know he was there and I know he was watching. And so she gave me instructions. She told me to take my clothes off and she instructed me to climb on top of her. Now, at this point as a child, this didn't seem right. It wasn't normal. I was scared. I didn't know what was going on, but I had an authority figure. I had my mother who I had been with all of my life telling me to do something. And I knew that when I didn't do what she said that I got in trouble. And so I was conflicted. I didn't want to do what she said, but at the same time, I knew if I didn't do what she said, then I would, the bad things would, would happen. And so, so I eventually uh, reluctantly took off my clothes and climbed on top of her. Now, this isn't a story that I tell a whole lot of people. There's only a handful of people who have know this story. So I'm, I'm letting you in on the inner circle here because you and I are exploring making of a nice guy together. I climbed on top of her and, and then my naked body is on top of her naked body. And at some point she starts um, contracting her um, vagina. We'll just say vagina. We'll use the word vagina. She started contracting her vagina and she said, can you feel that? And of course I could, I could feel it on my penis. And, and, and she said, that's, that's, that's my vagina, right? That's my, I can't remember the exact word she said, but she was trying to, to, to give me a sense of like this connection that these two pieces, these two parts were touching each other. And that was normal. And then the whole time I'm just crying, right? It's, it's stressful, I don't like it, I don't want it, I don't know what's going on, I'm confused, um, all of those types of things. And she tries to calm me, she tries to assure me. My stepfather's still in the corner watching, um, but the whole thing is just weird. And so at some point she becomes frustrated with me, she becomes upset with me. Maybe she's, a, she's feeling ashamed, maybe she's feeling embarrassed, maybe she's feeling rejected. I, I, that part of the story, I don't know, because we never talked about this. We never talked about this and my mother passed in 2019. And so we never, we never reconciled that part of our relationship. But she uh, eventually became angry with me and she told me to get off and she started to, sh you know, to shame me. She started to say, you know, just get off, just shut up, you know, and, and push me away and that sort of thing. And then she said, um, go take a shower, right? And she was just kind of mad at me. She was just pushing me away now. And so I did, I went and took a shower and in that, moment in that shower, I promised 
myself. I vowed that I would never do that to a woman. I would never make her feel that way. Now, I would love to stand here and tell you that I've never hurt a woman's feelings, that I've never objectified her, I've never made her feel that way. I can't say that. I can't say that. At the time that, that those things occurred, uh, I was doing the best that I could and my intentions were not to hurt that woman. But I can tell you that we make mistakes, that we don't always understand things, that we don't always know exactly how what we're doing, how we're being, what we think is impacting someone else. And so we're doing the best that we can. I'm sure on some level, my mother was doing the best that she could on that day. Maybe she was trying to maintain her relationship with her husband. Maybe she was trying to maintain safety and security. Maybe she was trying to teach me something. I don't really know. Like I said, we didn't get a chance to reconcile those things. But what I do know is that I carried that story with me for most of my life, for decades. It was a formative, transformative moment in my childhood. And it was a moment where I made a promise to myself. I created an operating instruction, a rule that said, I will, I will live this way. I won't do this, I will do that. And those become our rules, our operating instructions for our life. And we carry them into our adult life and we try to live by them. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Sometimes we're confused. Sometimes we're frustrated. Sometimes we're resentful. Sometimes we tell ourselves, I've done everything that I was supposed to do. How come everybody else isn't doing what they're supposed to do? There's times when we feel like we're on the same page with somebody when we're clearly not. We're seeing it from two different ends and we think that we're speaking the same language, but we're not. We may be using the same words, but those same words may have different meanings for us. So this is what I wanted to share with you today, not just that experience, but kind of how it affects us and how these things play out in our life. And so if you've experienced anything like that, if you've had moments in your life where you were confused, you were uh, hurt, you were frustrated, you didn't like the experience, whether it was sexual or not, I want to talk with you. I want to listen to your story. I want to hear what hurt you. I want to hear what you're confused about and what you would like to be different. I want to be able to ask you questions for clarification so you can get real super clear about what your thoughts are, what your beliefs are, what your operating instructions and rules are, how, what meaning you've assigned to things and what story you've told yourself. I want to be able to share my journey, my insight, perspective with you. I want to be able to share the insights of other men with you. And I want to be able to point to resources so you can surface your own answer. And I want to talk with you about coming up with a game plan, helping you move forward so that you can say, now what? Now that you've faced this, addressed it, now what? How do you want to move forward? How do you want to live? So there's a link in the description so you can pick a day and time to schedule a call. We can have a one hour call with each other on the phone. Pick a day and time that works for you and let's talk. You don't have to live with these memories. You can actually set yourself free from them. And that's something that I wanna help you with. That's something that I can help you with. It's something that I've done for myself and it's something that I've done for other men and I can do that for you too. So click on that link, pick a day and time, let's schedule a call. And until then, be kind to yourself, brother, and I'll talk to you soon.